Well, sawfish are elasmobranchs, so they have cartilage skeletons, uh, and they have a very unique uh, rostrum on the front of their head, and that's covered with uh, all kinds of sensory pores, but also teeth-like structures that uh, point out from the rostrum, and which they wield through the water, through schools of fish, or route through the bottom of the, the sediment to uh, stir up some food to eat. They're shark-like, uh, probably more like rays uh, because of the, the flatness of their body. But uh, definitely, they're in a different family than the sharks and the rays. The juvenile habitat is, is perfect in southwest Florida. Uh, the waters are warm, lots of uh, structure and habitat and food. And a lot of the fishing pressure in the uh, sort of the backwater areas uh, allows them to escape capture and, and uh, you know, hopefully make it to adulthood. Well, they definitely look prehistoric with the, uh, the rostrum full of teeth on the, on the front of their head. Um, probably because they're so dangerous and it's very difficult to deal with them if, if you do catch one. Um, it, it gets everyone's blood pumping and excitement, but you have to be extremely careful with sawfish. Um, best thing to do is to take a picture while it's still in the water and cut your line and, and let it go. Um, their rostrum is extremely dangerous. It will, it will cut through our skin very easily. Um, but probably just the excitement of, of seeing one or catching one because they are somewhat rare. Uh, 16 years ago, I started a juvenile shark survey in the 10,000 Islands, targeting sharks and their, how they're influenced by uh, canal systems that are being restored. Um, a few years into the project, I caught my first sawfish, and I've probably caught 50 or 60 since then. Uh, so I originally considered them bycatch in my shark study, but they've become more numerous. I do collect a lot of data from them, including genetic samples, uh, length, uh, I determine the sex and the um, reproductive condition of these sawfish. So all that information goes to into a database that's uh, collected on sawfish to help conserve and learn more about their, uh, their life history. Since it's illegal to, for even researchers to kill one, uh, we want to learn as much as we can about them. Uh, we have some new tagging technologies that we're going to be implementing soon that will uh, hopefully be able to track sawfish for five to ten years, depending on the tags we can put on them. And, uh, and it's part of a tagging effort all throughout the uh, Gulf of Mexico and the Keys and the East Coast. Uh, so there should be some really interesting information we learn in the next decade or so. My study has shown some trends in increased catches in the last four to five years compared to 10 years ago uh, when I had a, a fair number of sawfish catches. So it seems like the new recruits, the one and two year old sawfish, are slightly more abundant, at least in my study area, um, now compared to about 10 years ago.